ओम सहना वो सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर करवा वह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु माँ विदिषा वह ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम वसुदेवसुत देव कंस चाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु so we are on a section in chapter 6 of bhagavad gita where there are four verses verse 20 21 22 and 23 they are bunched together of chapter 6 talking about meditation and we were, we were reading i had explained everything and then we were reading swami ji's commentary and we finished half of it and then so we'll continue with the other half that's where we were so what we'll do is we'll just read the english translation of those four verses and then we will start from where we so that we have an idea of what krishna bhagwan is talking about because within one week you may have forgotten few things and all so just to refresh our memory we'll do that so do we do i have a volunteer who want to read if if i don't have a volunteer i will sushil ji did you want to read yes i can okay yeah, yeah. so um what you can do is you know the english translation of starting from verse 20 just read that english translation then we'll go to where we were okay from 20 yeah is it 20 mm-hmm. because the commentary is on all four together that's why yeah. when the mind restrained by the practice of yoga attains quietude and bear in seeing where in seeing the self by the self he is satisfied in his own self okay i think there are one or two people need to uh do mute okay here uh need i can mute you niruji that's fine okay and this other iphone i'm not sure who it is i'm going to just give me one minute okay because the background no- noise is start coming uh, how do i mute this person somehow i'm i'm not sure who is on this iphone if they, they could please mute because i'm not able to mute for some reason okay i think everyone everyone else is looks like okay all right sorry go ahead so this one sorry uh, this one was uh, talking about um, when the mind restrained by the practice of yoga now we know all the different things that krishna bhagwan said earlier attains quietude and seeing the self by the self means no other thoughts are there he's satisfied in his own self so that was 20 okay 21 when he the yogi feels that infinite infinite bliss which can be grasped by the pure intellect and which transcends the senses where in established he never moves from the reality so when he feels that the infinite bliss which can be grasped by the pure intellect and we saw that when you know rajas and tamas become less the sattva increases and then finally it goes into shuddha sattva and that's when you transcend all the senses and then he doesn't he never moves from reality means once he get established that's become permanent that's what he's talking about hmm. 22 which having obtained he thinks that there is no other gain superior to it wherein established he is not moved even by heavy sorrow so this this was a really significant thing also that once he reaches that state he realizes because there's so much bliss over there that's what is my final goal that's what i'm looking for in life so he realizes that nothing that comes close to it in the world with this and then at that situation he will not get moved by even the heaviest sorrow in the world that's what in the last one now 23 let it be known 
The severance from the union with pain is yoga. This yoga should be practiced with determination and with a mind steady and under un, undespairing. So, so here now, this is where that uh, what what Bharat sent that I was going to look at it because that is the best um, summary of that. Okay, so it says. Lord Krishna gave a revolutionary definition of yoga in this verse. He said that the ongoing union with sorrow and its disconnection, disassociation is yoga. So this is what that Dukkha Sanyoga Yoga, Yoga Sangitam. That's the meaning. So we need to disengage with objective world, finite world, and it because it is a womb of sorrow. Because in the world, no matter how great things look, it is going to end up in sorrow. That's what they're saying. And we need to detach our mind from the world and attach it to the real and permanent in us. That's the summary. So whoever is not seen, that's what it was. Okay, let me make sure my thing is still going on. Yes, okay. So this is what we are doing. And then we finished half of reading Swamiji's commentary. So we're going to read the other half. And um, Sushilji, you have it from where we are supposed to read, apart from the divine. Yeah. Apart from the divine prerogative of one who is an who is an incarnation we find a brilliant dash of revolutionary zeal in krishna's godly personality in both his emotions and his character when such a divine revol when such a divine revolute enters the fields of culture and spirituality he could not have given a more spectacular definition of yoga than that which he has given us here. Yoga, a state of disunion from the from every union with pain. This reinterpretation of yoga not only provides us with a striking definition of it, but at the same time it is couched in such a beautiful language of contradiction that it arrests the attention of every student and makes him think for himself. So he's just telling that, you know, Krishna Bhagwan, he is a, you know, incarnation. And he, ha he has this uh, kind of, what should I say, prerogative. He, he has a exclusive right almost to, because when, you know, when these kind of incarnation come on this earth, they come for a purpose. And one of the purpose is, you know, to reestablish dharma. And he's doing it through because there was so much misunderstanding and people had forgotten and, you know, definition of dharma and all that. And here he's bringing everything out. And uh, he said that he is giving a spectacular definition of yoga here. And it's in a contradictory type of language. And now you know why we have discussed it many times. The people, some people get very turned off by why they are contradicting, why this, why this, but they are making you think and go deeper. And the moment you see this, you know, Dukkha Sanyoga, Vyoga, on one hand he's saying Vyoga and one is Yoga, what is this? And you will deeply think and, and then you will come to your own conclusion that, hey, you know, getting away from the, you know, connection with the world and attaching to the higher, that's basically what he's talking about. Yeah, I have a question. I couldn't yeah. find out where he's reading. Oh, so you know this. Uh, you have the blue book, right? Do you yeah, have, have you have this? Book. Yeah. So go yeah, to yeah. Uh, because my page number may be different. Yeah, Meenaji is giving you the page number. It's page sixty-six. Look at page oh, sixty-six. Because mm. I have a very old one, so mine says forty-one. But uh, okay. it is so, the wrong page. Okay. So did you get it now? Where you are? So now he's going to start with the paragraph. The term yoga means contact. That's what he's going to okay, start. Okay, now, now I got it. You got it? Good. Okay, yeah. Sushilji. The term yoga means contact. Today as it is, man in his imperfections has contacts with the only world of finite objects. And therefore, he eats out of life only the finite joys. These objects of world are contacted through the instruments of man's body mind and intellect joy ended joy ended is the birth of sorrow therefore life therefore life through the matter vestures is the life of pain yoga dukkha yoga yeah so here 
is giving a very rational reason. Firstly, starting with the, the term yoga means contact. The, what contact they're talking about? They're talking about our contact of senses with the world. And, you know, world is uh, finite. So, koi bhi cheez hum pakar le dunya mein, it, it, has, it is going to end. You know, whether it's, it's relationships or things or beings or, and all that, in the, because they're finite. And so, he's just telling you that finite ka joy bhi finite hi hoega. Or, you know, and if you don't contemplate on anything higher and connect to anything higher, then in the end, you know, uh, joy ended is a birth of sorrow because it's going to end and then your joy of that thing will end because that thing has finished. So, so he's just telling you, it's a very simple logic, you know, once we know. Yeah. Detachment from the pain yoga is naturally a process in which we disconnect the yoga ourselves from the fields of objects and their experiences. A total or even partial divorce from the perceptions of the world of objects is not possible. As long as we are using the mechanism of perceptions, the organ of feeling and the instruments of thinking, to get ourselves detached from the mechanisms of perceptions, feelings and thoughts would be naturally the total detachment from the pain yoga, Duksam yoga, yoga. So, so he, now he's telling you another fact. He's saying that as long as we are thinking, using the instrument of feeling and thinking, we cannot detach until we attach that to somebody, something. That's exactly why I absolutely like the way Krishna Bhagwan explained how to meditate is you attach to the higher. Because in a lot of places you'll say, oh, just don't think of anything. And it's not possible to do that. And what here he's telling you a technique that you disconnect, but attach to the world, sorry, dis, detach from the world, attach to the higher, higher is fi, infinite, that's why you will slide in infinite. Very, the moment you're going to just keep doing, you know, worldly objects to meditate upon and things like symbol or anything, it's not going to take you to the highest. So it's very clear now after going through this, what, what Krishna Bhagavan is trying to say, and this is a real fact that you cannot have something called an empty mind. Either mind gets completely dissolved, that can happen at the higher state, or it has to attach to something. So now he's going to tell you in the next paragraph. Existence of the mind is possible only through its attachment. The mind can never live without attaching itself to some object or the other. If it has to detach from the object, it's possible for the mind only when it has attached itself to another. For the mind, detachment from pain caused by unreal is possible only when it gets attached to the bliss. That is the nature of the real. In this sense, the true yoga, which is seeking and establishing an enduring attachment with the real, is gained only when the seeker cries a heart, cries a heart in his onward match towards pain and deliberately takes a right about turn to proceed towards the real and permanent in himself. This wonderful idea has been most expressly brought out in this praise, which Bhagavad, which Bhagwan employs here as a definition of yoga, Doksam yoga, yoga. Yeah, so then we, we have discussed all these points and then the same thing was in the Kathopanishad also that our senses are always drawn outside. So you have to turn around the senses and you do it with intelligence and wisdom and knowledge and whatever you learn in the Shastras and all that. That's how you make the about turn and try to attach to the self. So there are so many different ways of looking at it, but they're all saying the same thing. Whatever you connect to, how to detach and how to attach to the higher, you can choose your path. Hmm. Is little scrutiny will enable us to realize that in defining yoga, the gopis lover Sri Krishna has not introduced any new ideology into the stock of knowledge that was the traditional wealth of the Hindu scriptures. Till then, yoga was emphasized from the standpoint of its goal rather than from the explanation of its means. This overemphasis of the goal had frightened away the faithful followers 
promise salutary blessings and the teaching and the technique of yoga at Sat to become a mysterious and very secret practice meant only for a few. So there are two points he mentioned here. Firstly, he's saying Krish- Lord Krishna is not telling anything new. Because sometimes, you know, people are saying, oh, you know, Krishna said this as though he's the only one saying no. All the wise people are saying the same thing. Shastrada is saying the same thing. Whether it's Ram Bhagwan or whichever incarnation, you know, their basis is exactly the same thing. As an, And I always say the Krishna Bhagwan packaged it very nicely. And he gave a revolutionary definition for telling the same truth in a different way so that we can understand and think and all. So that's one thing we have to absolutely know that he's telling the same thing which are in the Shastras and Upanishads and all that. And the um, second thing he was saying is also very significant. Every You know, India may moksha is a word everybody knows. <laughs> you know, that we, that's what is ultimate goal and that's what we want. Sabhi ko moksha ye. Itna emphasis on the goal, but usme pohunche kaise ye ne, ye kisi ko malum nahi. That's what he's talking about. That he's telling you how to do it. Then he started from that karma yoga. You know, the karma yoga, upasana, then the knowledge will come and then you sit in meditation and in meditation we have to do so many things. You know, path is showing as clearly as possible. So if we are not progressing, we have to go back and scrutinize ourselves. Am I doing all these things? Because to me, you know, a lot of people, oh, I'm doing a lot of work and I need to do meditate now. But hey, am I doing the work in the right attitude? If I have not even done my first step, how can I do the next one? It's like, okay, I have to climb the steps one at a time and I want to reach the hundredth step. I want to take a leap and I might fall and break my back, <laughs> you know. So that's what it is. So he's saying that here and in this, these verses also, he's telling you emphasis on how to get there, which is a very, very important thing. Then everybody can, you know, find the path. Every true seeker thus got extremely frightened of our religion and Arjuna was one of them. To, pers- to persuade him to come and play in the power of our religion is the missionary work that Krishna had to undertake in the Gita. The missionary in Krishna could not have done it better than by explaining to Arjuna that yoga is nothing but a renunciation of his contact with the sorrows and direct entry into the cause of this, which is his own real nature. When we consider this definition of yoga in this light, it is a surprise indeed that it has not become as famous as it should have been had the students of Gita really grasped the infinite blessings of this inimitable explanation. So he's just telling it, Swamiji is like, he's saying, my God, this explains everything according to Swamiji. And inimitable is like matchless. You cannot find this um, revolutionary explanation. And he, Swamiji is surprised that if you really understood what he's saying, why this has not become the most popular definition of yoga. That's what he's saying. But this says it all according to him. So that's what his, Swamiji's sentiments are that, you know, this should have become more popular because otherwise people just go, okay, yoga is a union with the higher karke chup ho jate. But this is dukha san yoga vi yoga. Yoga is, is even, makes you think and have, there's a path given in this particular, you know, four letters. That's what it is. This, this yoga is to be practiced, insists Krishna with an eager and decisive mind to practice with firm resolve and undespairing heart is the simple secret for the highest success in the practice of meditation. The yoga with the true, the yoga with the true is gained through a total successful yoga from the false. So another uh, couple of points that he emphasized in that verse was it has to be practiced with firm resolve and undespairing heart is the simple secret. So firm resolve is uh, not, not wishy-washy, you know, aaj ki akal ke. No, I want to get this done and I believe in this and I'm going to do this, that kind of thing. And undespairing, you know, having doubts and all kinds of things. You have to develop that shraddha that Krishna Bhagavan is saying, you know, it got to be true, whichever way you want to look at it. But 
basically those two things point out also without that we won't get it if we feel uncomfortably warm by being very near the fireplace we have only to move away from it to reach the embrace of the cool and comforting comforting atmosphere similarly if to live among the finite objects and live it live its limited joys or sorrow then to get away from them is to enter into the realm of bliss which is the self this is yoga so here uh, swami ji even made it more simpler for all of us and he gave this analogy that you are you're standing near a a fireplace and now you're getting too hot too hot so a lot of people they just sit there and complain i have seen about the weather also they will not dress up properly they won't wear a sweater oh, it's so cold in san diego it's this and that why don't you wear a jacket and you will be fine so he's saying that just do the remedy and what is the remedy just get away from that fire and there you are already in, in cool I mean the second part you don't even have to do that much all he's saying is get if if the world is giving you sorrow and get away from it and then then you will be attaching to the higher so you can look at it that way too that even that first step is going to make you in the right go in the right direction so this is a comment any any question on these four verses question or comment and anybody wants to add anything so much we talked about this getting away from the finite objects true what about the mind we talked about a little bit about the uh, mind aspect also but the sankalpa etc which occurs in the mind which occurs you know the thoughts running thoughts so it's not just the objects outside but it is also the running mind you know that has to be stopped in order for us to go higher because if our run of thoughts keep on running um i felt like the mind has to be stopped he's mentioned little bit in this word i think paragraph but i didn't see the whole lot because earlier he had mentioned about sankalpa yeah yeah it's coming the next verses right that's exactly it starts with the sankalpa bhagwan that's what we're going to do today so you are absolutely right so he had talked a lot about before then he talked about all this and now he's going back to that sankalpa because he knows that that is the problem in fact you know like um, the um, delhi wale swami nikhilanand ji was saying that that's why there's so many so much repetition has to be done because certain problems are there with us very deep and you know yeah. this uh, this desire born out of sankalp are the problem in the world and it's in the end it, pro- yes yeah. so main problem actually because yes. you know like at, at our age now we, we don't care so much for all these fancy objects this and that like we would we did in the younger days our problem is more the mind running yes right yes So, Correct. so that is a that is a very big problem because right now everybody is trying to get rid of the things that they have and they want less and our mind keeps running and that's exactly what he's talking about and then then um, desires born out of sankalp that's a little bit tricky thing to understand because uh, it can be taken in a very wrong way also that hey you know I no have no desire don't do anything just sit down and just. vegetate or something that's not what he's talking about it because right. in fact krishna bhagwan is saying exactly ulta and our mm-hmm. teacher used to say you know work 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 but don't get stressed <laughs> you know you do it for like you know benefit of everybody and all that so what is this sankalp thing the bit, and that swami ji has explained all throughout in different commentaries and all that it is our imagination it's like going in the past and future and ye ho jayega wo ho jayega regrets of the past you know anxiety of the future all that comes under that sankalp wala jo jo bekar mein hum log fanciful imaginations exactly you know and wool they call it uh, in english there is a word wool gathering yeah yeah you know sitting and just you know um, you know like some people you, you talk to that they will say the world is going to just destroy itself because you know of the nuclear bombs or 
यू नो सम पेंडेमिक में सब मर जाएंगे गॉड डोंट यू नो लाइक पेसिमिज्म का कोई अंत ही नहीं है एज दो यू नो देर इज नो बडी हुज हुज वॉचिंग ओवर यू यू नो दैट्स इफ यू इफ यू डोंट हैव एनी फेथ इन इन सम काइंड ऑफ नेचर और हायर सेल्फ दैट हैव बैलेंस इट्स सेल्फ एंड इट विल डू व्हाट इज नेसेसरी काइंड ऑफ थिंग यू नो इफ यू डोंट हैव दैट फेथ देन देन ऑल दैट फैंसीफुल इमेजिनेशन दैट विल दैट्स व्हाट इट इज एंड दैट्स व्हाट इज कमिंग इन नेक्स्ट टू वर्सेस so we can when we go there let's see if we that answers the questions yeah yeah any other point okay one second something popped okay so shall we go then so the next two verses are you know more like another summary of of what you are supposed to do because krishna bhagwan knows very well That that is the biggest question we have. Okay, मैं मैंने ये सब कर अब मैं क्या करूँ अब मैं क्या करूँ इट गिविंग यू गिविंग अ स्टेप तुम क्या करो यू नो आसन बना लिया बैठ गए यू नो मन को समझा लिया वगैरह वगैरह ना अगेन फाइनल ट्वीकिंग यू नो सो ही रिपीट दैट्स वाई देर आर सो मेनी वर्सेज इन दिस बिकॉज मेडिटेशन नहीं तो चार वर्सेज में मेडिटेशन खत्म कर देते राइट No, he is just hammering it because he knows that our our problem is. And after that, we Arjun will ask. And we know it, that after the whole katha is over of meditation, he is going to say, "But but my mind is too exactly what you are saying. You know, my mind has a problem." And he is going to say, "Don't worry. You know, he is going to give again few tips." So then, I think that we are just like Arjun. No. no doubt about it and and that's okay that's exactly why we are studying bhagavad gita so it's good that all those doubts come into us okay so here uh, we'll do the these two verses together now 24 and 25 that again is is telling you the path in in a you know summary of the path and what exactly you're supposed to do so i'm going to chant here संकल्पभवान काम त्यक्वान शेषत मन सेंद्रिय ग्राम विनियम्य सत संकल्प प्रभवान बॉर्न ऑफ संकल्प इमेजिनेशन उन्होंने परेंथिस में डाल दिया तो ये नहीं सोचना कि सारे डिजायर ही खराब है <laughs> there are certain things we have to do in the world but this is just unnecessary churning of the mind he's talking about kaman is desires tyaktwa having abandoned sarvan all so you know ne koi no stone unturned yani ki ek do desire agar main fanciful imagine no no he's saying all born of sankalp you have to give asheshta and then again he was not satisfied with all so he said without reserve ek zara sa bhi nahi bachna chahiye that's what he's telling you manasa by the mind eva even so even zara si bhi nahi honi chahiye that's what he's saying indriya gramam so gramam gram jo the village ko bolte hain samuha so whole group of senses so that this when you say indriya gram all my five senses karma indriya everything comes under that vini yamya completely restraining from all sides so again he is talking about restraining the senses because somebody was saying um, it was uh, one of the swamis um, sarva priyanand ji he is saying that one of the western guys you know because he studies both philosophies he is saying he compared the senses to a size of elephant <laughs> you know they are so big <laughs> that वैसे तो आंखें छोटी छोटी है कान इधर है इतने भग, इतने पावरफुल होते हैं यू नो जरा सा भी कुछ होता है वी वी कैन नो इट सो दे आर लाइक टू कंट्रोल देम इज लाइक कंट्रोलिंग अ हाथी ही सेड आई सो सो आई थॉट दैट वाज वेरी गुड नॉलेज दैट्स व्हाई कृष्ण भगवान इज कीप ब्रिंगिंग दैट अगेन एंड अगेन एंड देन यू नो रिमेंबर वी कैन नॉट फॉरगेट एवरीथिंग दैट ही टॉक्ड अबाउट इन चैप्टर 1 2 3 4 एंड 5 सो दैट्स व्हाई वी हैव टू रीड अगेन एंड अगेन बिकॉज़ वी फॉरगेट how to control he has already told many many tips over there some of them are coming back again don't come by the, the sway of likes and dislike that's how you start with your senses so anyway that i was just going back but basically he's saying restraining all the senses from all sides and i'll just read the english translation here because that will connect us to the next one because we're going to do it together abandoning without reserve all desires born of sankalpa and completely restraining 
the whole group of senses by the mind from all sides. And then here he has used this whole group of senses by the mind. So we are going to go a little bit into it that how to do it. There is a trick to it from all sides. So that's that was this verse. And the next one, which is it's a continuation of that verse. Shane Shane Uparamed Buddha Druti Gruhitaya Atma Sansthamana Krutva Nakinchida Pichintayet. So here here is I think that um, Anilji had mentioned that that you can only do slowly and I said the verse is coming Shane Shane. Shane Shane means gradually. Because this thing can, you know, we cannot, oh, aaj mein soch liya, ah, my mind has to be controlled. I'm going to sit down and control my mind. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's shane shane. You have to do it slowly by all these practices continuously. And that's where all the sadhana comes in. When you, if suppose I'm not able to do, I got to go back and look at my karma yoga. Am I doing it correctly? That will help me again. So that's how. Slowly you have to continue your practice. Shane shane. Uparamed, let him attain quietitude by the intellect. So, par, you know, like there was a verse in chapter 3 that Krishna Bhagwan mentioned that how you, uh, you know, if you likes and dislikes, if they don't, um, if you don't control them at an early stage, it becomes into love and hate because you have put your emotion into it, Right? And then it's harder to control. And then the third stage was your, your, your intellect start justifying it. Oh, I'm doing this because of this, you know. I'm justified in it. That's the more, even more dangerous thing. So if you have a problem at the level of senses and you're not able to, you know, you are coming under the sway of likes and dislikes, you're not able to control it over there, then you have to use your mind because the mind is a higher level. And you got to say, no, no, this is not right. I, I cannot. And then your mind is not listening. You sit, sit at the seat of intellect. Intellect is where wisdom is there. Knowledge is there. Where you, you have, say, say you hear some Swami's lecture and then, you know, he's saying something. He's like, yeah, I got to hold on to that. That is from there you control the mind and senses. See what I'm saying? So, so it's like when the enemy is hiding in, in the bunker, then... Or at a lower tail, and you got to go on the pahari and shoot at him. Then you will get him, Some, something like that, you know. So you go in the higher self in your, so the so mind is higher than senses and the intellect is higher than um, mind. And the ultimate is, a, is of course, the consciousness. You know, but if you are not there, at least this path is there. That's why they use this, this sentence that, you know, um, by the buddhi, by the intellect. That's what it is, okay. Dhruti gruhitaya, held in firmness. So that knowledge that you have and the buddhi that you have, usse pakad ke rakho usko. That's what he's telling you. So, yaha maa jane mat do. Atma sanstan, placed in the self. And as I was saying that if you have placed your mind in the self, then it will be a lot easier to control all these other things. Manaha, the mind. Krutva, having made. No is not kinchit is anything. Api is even chintayet. Let him think. So what is he saying? Little by little, let him attain quietitude by the intellect held in firmness. Having made the mind established in the self, let him not think of anything. Because Krishna Bhagavan knows itna karne ke baad bhi, there is a danger ki mein again I'll slip and start thinking. So he's saying, just hold your mind over there and don't think of anything else. Something like that. But we'll go more in detail and see you know, what Nikhila Nandi brings the points and all that. So, so let's backtrack now and a little bit that, okay, Bhagwan is saying that ultimately we have to get our mind absorbed in the self, right? That was a whole idea so that in the end it merges. So then how do we do? So these two verses are again giving you a summary of the entire thing that he talked about. That you begin by dropping all the desire born out of sankalp. Okay. It means imagination and we discussed it. You know what it is. That it is just useless things. Can I ask you one question? Ah. Before you 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it is born of fruit of action, sankalpa. Fruit of action is the uh, result of what we are doing and what we are getting. That's the fruit of the action of done. Where, where did you it's get that from? Sorry. Where did you get the fruit of action? The, the first line is the born of fruit of action, sankalpa. When you read, when you read it. Right? Abandoning without reserve all desires born of fruit of action, Sankalpa. Right? This is 24, the first line. Oh, you mean the, the translation? The translation. Yeah, yes. mere mein, mere mein wo hai. but anyway, that, that, that is correct. If you uh, have it, yeah, we can discuss that. Somehow in mind, it is abandoning without reserve all desire born of Sankalpa and completely restraining. In born. yours, is saying uh, fruit of, okay. So, so what? Saying born fruit of action. To me, that was like, okay, this is part of it. Fruit of action, okay, I'm expecting some results. Exactly, yes, yes, absolutely. When do we imagine, what are we imagining? We are but imagining so, fruits of... Could be anything else also. Like I, what, tell me. I, uh, okay, I hear a phone call, I hear a phone ringing. Okay, and all of a sudden I'm being pessimistic person, I think of something wrong. Okay, this person, why did he call me at this time? Must be something, okay. I have not done any action, but my my mind ran off. Or I'm doing something, you know, okay, I'm, I'm cooking and I want to do the best. Or oh, if I do this, I'll be, it'll be the best. I know I can do it. Okay, this is another santa, but it may or may not turn out right. Yeah, so but look look over there in your own thing. If you're cooking something and you're saying, oh, I want it turned out to best, that is a fruit of action that you, you are right. a particular kind of fruit of action you're looking for. Right, but so isn't what well, my question to you is? Isn't sankalpa both the things? Sankalpa yeah, yeah, yeah. I think sankalpa is a see. That's exactly what I, I tell in Bhagavad Gita, that the, sometimes the word definition will change according to the context, and it will encompass a bigger thing. So when Krishna Bhagwan is talking about sankalpa over here, firstly, it is not that same sankalpa that we do when we do a some kind of yagna or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah if I want to achieve something higher and I'm doing a sankalpa, people get confused about that. Does that mean I'm not? I don't know. No, of course, go do that. Nobody is telling you not to do because that without that kind of sankalpa, we cannot progress. If yes. I don't make a sankalpa of getting up at certain time, I may miss the boat or you know miss some so many things. So, so we we understood that. What Sankalpa they are talking about is useless stuff that create agitations. And what you are describing, those things are useless stuff that do create agitation. Right? Okay. So they don't mean just the born of fruit of action because that where my question was. Yeah, you can encompass word other, word. other worries also. It may not be. Okay. Yeah, you can. And if you really analyze it, it uh, becomes, it is kind of, what should I say, offshoot of that main problem of fruit of action only. But you have, to, you have to do some kind of contemplation of it. And I'll tell you why. That if a phone call comes, you want it to be a good news. That worry that you are doing is because you want a certain good news only. Think about it. The reason your mind is going and saying, hey, I hope this is not something bad. Why? Because you're looking for some a particular kind of thing. So, so most of our sankalp is born out of that fruit of action. But that requires a little bit of contemplation why it is like that. You know, think about yeah. it and we can, we can discuss it next, next week. That even a, like your cooking example you gave, that was clearly for the fruit of action. That yes, you know, yeah? yes. I but even, even the fact that I don't want, a, maybe there is a bad news because I don't want bad news. Okay, the back of my mind, not that... I'm yes, back of your mind. See, these are subtle subjects. Yes, these are subtle subjects. So in other words, we are not going with the flow of the universe. We want it our way. True. That's why. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so so here everybody kind of got the gist now with this discussion. This was a good thing that uh, Meena ji brought up. That okay, what is sankalp? So just dropping all that. So with after we do all that, when we sit in the meditation, so of course we have to follow everything that previously was done, asan and this and that. That is kind of understood. 
And then once we have that steadiness and focused mind with all the preparation that Krishna Bhagavan is talking, then we have to, again he repeats, that you have to bring that mind in the present moment. You know, and drop all the desire. So even if, when we are sitting in that seat, that time we have to even drop the good desires. Think about it. See, in the, when we are working outside, okay, you know, I, I don't need to give up all desires because certain sankalp I want to do, blah, 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 and all that. That's great. But when I'm sitting down, my date is only with God. I don't need to do anything else. That's what he's talking about. That, you know, drop all the desire. And then how do you do that? I mean, that's the kind of tip he gave. Uh, so you do it by intellect means our knowledge. Hey, this is what I need to do. This is how I, I need to do and uh, I have to do. And, and this is the most important thing for me. So you and the other, all the techniques and all that I have learned. And then that's when you tell yourself, I don't want anything else. So here, Nikhilananji brought that point that even a single desire it will disturb you in the process of meditation. And, and he loves the example of sleep. And we can connect to it that when you want to sleep, you have to give up all thoughts if you want to go in the deep sleep. The, the reason you go in the deep sleep, you have dropped all the thoughts. You know, because if you have not dropped all the thoughts, then either you are awake or you are in a dream state. But when, when you are in deep sleep, you have to, so you can just compare that. That's without that deep sleep, sleep cannot come. Um, so um, just to open up the whole thing, what did he mean by that? You know, like when we are sitting, all the five senses, you know, no desire that to to touch anything or hear anything. So that's why even if you cannot close your ears, you know, when you are sitting, you don't engage with it. You send them on a holiday right now, not now, kind of thing. Okay, that's what it is. So we have talked about it, that how you were saying this and them on a holiday. And then, why do I'm doing that? Because right now I'm not seeking anything else. That's why, you know, I want to seek myself. So that kind of understanding has to come. And, um, okay, here I made the notes about that. I already discussed in our discussion that what is Sankalp and all that. So I'm, I'm not going to go with it again. And then he used the word, Asheshataha. Because you want to emphasize completely. Same thing that what Nakhilananji is saying. Even if one thing is there, you won't be able to go to deep sleep. That's why Asheshtaha. And then the whole process, I'll just repeat it over here. We discussed it, but just, you know, so that the thought is in, in, a, in a proper sequence. That not allowing our senses to go because you hold those things by giving instructions through the mind. Because they say, but then I घोड़े हैं किसी रथ के उनका तो स्वभाव ही है इधर उधर जाना बट वो लगाम से पकड़ा हुआ है उसको राइट दैट्स व्हाट इज टेलिंग यू यूज योर माइंड टू कंट्रोल दिस एंड ही इज रिपीटिंग इट ओवर हियर जस्ट रिमाइंडिंग अस ही इज मेंशनड इट मेनी टाइम्स अर्लियर बट ही जस्ट रिमाइंडिंग यू बिकॉज़ सम टाइम ओ आई कैन नॉट कंट्रोल नो यू कैन इफ यू गो सिट इन द सीट ऑफ इफ योर लगाम को पकड़ के रखोगे तो होगा एंड वी नो दैट you know, at our age that we shouldn't be eating certain kind of food because it doesn't suit me anymore. You know, it will give me. So then I say, my, my sense is saying, you know, this is tasting very good. And mine has to say, no, the, tonight you're going to be in big trouble then. That's why you don't do it. See what I'm saying? So something like that over here that he's saying that use your higher self to control your senses. You know, and then, um, so once you have done that, so what has happened? senses have become steady and in that therefore the mind will also become steady jab ghode shant ho jayenge na to rath bhi shant ho jayega and then seedhe raste pe chalega right so that's what it is point is sorry go ahead ha no no bolie koi baat our mind only activates because of desire if there is no desire mind has nothing to do true you are absolutely right. So the first thing is to not desire anything when you sit down for meditation. Yeah, when you sit down for meditation, absolutely. If somebody can achieve that, Anilji, he has really 
done quite a bit. You know, that is yeah, the that biggest is, problem. That is, that is the only way your mind will quiet down. Otherwise, it will keep jumping. Exactly. Yeah. So now, you know, to for, for us to be successful in that meditation, if the rest 23 hours also we have made it less, then it will be easier. That's why, you know, a very, very rajasic person uh, and tamasic and rajasic, you know, if he's going to sit in meditation, he's not going to be successful. And that was called Bhagavan Me Mithya Chari Bola. You're, you're sitting, you know, like a Buddha and everybody say, wow, you're meditating. Andar se tufan chal rahe. You're not going to progress then, you know. So, so true. So all that factor comes here for sure. You know? But, you know, tufan ki baat aap kar rahe ho. So, um, if you have a light music, very light, like a flute type thing, that helps you just to get get it get back to you. Get tuned, yeah. Right? Uh, I mean, sometimes you need that little thing because my mind is just going around and around things. Then it'll calm down if I just do that little bit of listening. So that means I'm still employing, I'm getting that one of the senses working still. It's that's okay. Still that's in early stages. And, and he, Krishna Bhagavan did not discourage. That's why he talked about karma yoga and upasana. And under upasana, all those things come. That you, he, right now he's talking about the final stages. Doesn't mean that if we are, I'm not there, I should not use what the methods that you're saying. That's why japa karo, uh, you know, some people, you know, they want to go to a certain kind of place that makes them quiet or some mantra make them quiet because they have affinity to that mantra or chanting om. All of that is absolutely fine. You know, to finally, he's ta- he, Krishna Bhagavan is taking you to the highest mountain peak right now. But what you're talking about earlier stages, yeah, it is absolutely okay to do all those things. Whatever makes your mind quiet is will be helpful. And because he said that in order to detach from something, you have to attach your mind to something. Yep. So what Meenaji is saying that in the early stages, if you can attach your mind to music, mm-hmm then you are already detaching from other things. Yes, absolutely. And that is that is a very good. And then, you know, I'm sure that the music you're talking about is not some rock music or something. Again, it will get disturbed, you know, some. That's why the, whenever they talk, they see, uh, not see, if you see, hear the music meant for meditation, they are very, very calm and soft and all that, you know. Yes, that's yeah. what I mean. But even just to do a japa, etc., you know, it helps then to bring back to that mm-hmm. japa itself. Yes. Once that, the other things settle down in your mind with that music, then the japa becomes, or whatever the mantra is, becomes a little bit more clear in your mind or something like that. Yeah. I mean, I, so I was wondering, but, but I am employing senses there. It's I'm okay. One of the senses. But you are not employing senses in the world. You are employing for a purpose to get there. It's like that yeah. high jump that we talk about. The guy has to use the pole. But once he reaches a certain height, he's going to drop the pole. You cannot, he cannot take the pole and jump because he'll have an accident then. <laughs> right, right, right. So yeah. if you're taking your senses, because remember in Katopanishad that mentioned in one of the verses that that's the only instrument we have. Is our yeah. senses, mind, intellect, and our body. Yeah. So, if we use it properly to get to the place, it's very good. No problem at all. You know, but all he's saying is that we don't sit in the rath all the time. Because if I have to get to a destination, right? So, I have to leave the rath in the end. I cannot bring the car to my bedroom or my house yeah. inside. When I come to my house, I got to get out of the car. Yeah. Right? So just think of it that way. But I got to tune my car to get there. But then mm-hmm. I got to drop the car. That's yeah. all he's yeah. saying. And also, Meenari, you must uh, have noticed when you are focusing your mind on certain music uh, for meditation, after a few minutes, you will not be aware of the music also. Right, right. Yeah, so it's done its job then. And then, you know, after a while, whether the music is there or not, it won't make a difference if you come to a certain stage then. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. 
So, you know, these are all the things that kind of fits into the right context now. Once you know the whole picture that, okay, there is a role for it, how much it is and when you don't need it and all, you will kind of know. Okay. Going back to what Anilji was saying about giving up desires when you're trying to do meditation and you say, okay, from tomorrow onwards, I'm going to give up all my desires. I'm doing that simple part that from tomorrow onwards, I'm going to give up all my desires. You keep saying that and you do this sankalpa. That's where one of our Swamiji's explained that that sankalpa, you have to give up that because that sankalpa is, is like building castles in the air. Yes. <laughs> that sankalpa they are talking about here to give up. Not everything else you want to promise means you do, do sankalpas to do certain things. But this type of sankalpa where you know it's not going to happen, you are not going to be able to achieve it, you are just dreaming about it. Fanciful, it fanciful sankalpa, exactly. To give up that type of sankalpa are the fruits from that. That's what we were talking about in uh, 24th. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point because sometimes, you know, just the word sankalpa, people, we might get confused. He's just telling you unrealistic thing and all that. Drop right. it, right? Huh, good. Yeah. Okay. So at now at this stage, slowly, slowly, we have mind has become steady. So then try to um, continue that journey, quieten the mind with wisdom, understanding, uh, intellect, you know, knowledge. Use employ all the things that you have gathered to to hold the mind over there. Okay. So it's that's why this this word is there, druti uh, gruhitaya. With the perseverance, dhruti means dhairya jisko bolte hai, patience ke saath. You know, agar nahi ho raha hai, to patience rakho and then try to find out the reason and all that. Mean, all he's trying to tell you, it's not going to happen. Like Sushil ji was saying, hey, from tomorrow I'm going to do this. You're going to fail miserable. Because you got to do it all different things and with understanding. And so now, after you have quietened the mind, then what are we going to what our goal is to make it think of the self. Actually, the whole thing is, and I think that Nikhil Anandji has explained it very, very well, that final goal is having attention on the self. That's when you drop the thoughts also. But in the beginning, thoughts of the self are important because that's where you are engaging. That attachment that we are talking about with the self, that's what happens when you're thinking about the self. So at that stage, the thinking is fine. So basically, you are putting all emotion and thoughts in the self. That's where the bhakti also comes in. You know, somebody who has affinity, says to Lord Krishna, for him it will be easier to think about Lord Krishna rather than a Nirgun Brahma or something, you know. So everybody can pick their favorite, you know, Ganesha, whoever you want to is okay at that stage, you know, that your thoughts and emotions you put in that self. And, and then slowly attention is uh, put on the self you know thoughts get because you get absorbed your mind gets absorbed in it and that's where the, that's called you know through the attention you're getting absorbed in the in the self so he's saying this whole process takes time and practice that's why they keep saying that do at the same place every day and then the joe was saying that how when he says the mantra it automatically brings brings him there it's like when, when i go in the kitchen uh, to cook, then my mind is cook for setting because I'm in that place. See what I'm saying? The same way if I create a place and then I, I know that if I'm going to sit there, then I got to drop all, all, all sankalpas. Something like that. Okay. So, um, then another important, you know, Krishna Bhagavan is not satisfied. He knows our mind. What are we doing? People are so he no make last words be bold here, yeah, but within this too. He's saying that after placing the mind in the self, he said, na kinchita bhi chintaye. Kisi or koi or thought aane madhu. Pagad ke rakho usko vaha pe. That's what he's telling. That don't initiate any thought. Let the mind be dissolved in the self. You know, just cautioning. So he's saying that, Again, uh, Nikhila Nanji loves the sleep example. He's saying just like the mind gets dissolved in the ignorance in the sleep actually. Okay. 
there the problem is it does get dissolved but it is in the ignorance and here in meditation you are dissolving in the self consciousness Con and then so some people might say oh, what the, what does that mean so then then sometimes these swamis you know when gorang bai used to call it he used to call it objects less thoughtless awareness means the light is there in this room but if i remove all the objects from the room the light is still there illumining it is not illumining any object that's all so that's why it's called objects less thoughtless awareness no thoughts no emotion but awareness is there that's when and then swami ji in his commentary is going to say that hamara purusharth wahan tak hi hai uske baad wo auto mein chalega and then um tejo manan ji used that word magic will happen <laughs> you get sucked into it just like i don't know when i get sucked into sleep deep sleep i did all the preparation i did everything i'll drop my last thought and boom it happened so then he saying you bring yourself knock and wait remember he said that knock and wait and the god will pull you in so that's what is going to happen so this these two that's what he's talking any other uh, question or comment before we read swami ji's commentary or anybody wants to add anything who oh, i just looked at the time it's already yeah so i think we'll have to read next time but we have a few minutes if somebody has any comment question or want to add anything to this Okay, so what we'll do is we will close Bhagavad Gita here, and we'll read Swami Ji's commentary, and then everybody can contemplate upon all the things. And if there is still any questions, we can take it up next time. Or if something comes up in the last half an hour, also. Okay, Sarva Dharman Parityajya Mame Kam Sharanam Raja Aham Tva Sarva Pape Bhya. मोक्ष ईश्या मा शुच हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम